Greetings, my fellow humanoid dwellers. I create videos on technology and other random things. If you like this video, you might like others. If you don't like this video, you still might like others. Consider subscribing to my channel or checking out my Patreon page. If you already subscribe, hit that bell. In this video, we're going to convert the Celsius to Fahrenheit. We're also going to set up what's called an array to store the temperatures in so that we can display them in a certain order. And we're going to add an interval so we can collect them automatically. Our HTML file is going to stay the same as it's always been. The CSS file is going to stay the same. In this example, we're going to go ahead and just collect just the temperature. So the data coming back from the PHP, we don't want it to have anything but the temperature. So we're going to comment out this final BR tag. Everything else we do is going to be in this JavaScript file. First thing we're going to do is we're going to set up an array. When you create a variable or an array, um, you can either make it a constant so it can't be changed, or you can make it a variable one. If you make it a variable one, you start with let. We're going to call this one temp array. And we're going to go ahead and fill it with, with just some data that we're actually not going to use, just for placeholders. And we're going to have it a 10 spot array. Hopefully it will be clear as I go through the rest how we use it and, and what the purpose of it is. We're going to leave this alone and now we know we're only going to return the value. It's going to be in one long number. We're going to have to deal with that because instead of 21,000 or 20,000 we're going to have to have a decimal point. So we'll go ahead and create a little space. The value that we get back from the PHP is in a string and we want to make sure that that comes in a float. So that way a float is just with decimal points. An integer has no decimal point. They would round everything. So we're going to create a variable called temperature or temp if you want. Parse float It's going to take whatever comes back and it's going to do the best it can to, to convert that or to change that into an integer. Now for this line what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to show the variable instead. So we just change that to temp. Now what's going to happen is we're, we're going to show the, the float that we got back. We can go ahead and test this now. And now you can see that it still works just like it did before. But we don't have that BR tag so it's just going to stack the numbers on top of each other. So we'll go back to the code and we'll, we'll change that. And we'll go ahead and add a line. We're just going to add text instead of a variable. The other thing we have to do is we want to show this as a decimal point. So we're going to go ahead and make temp equal to temp divided by 1000. We'll save this. We'll upload it. Now we're back here. We'll refresh the page. And now we get 21.125. If I click again, it should show up below it. Now we're pretty much back to where we were before, except we're still showing in Celsius, so we need to make that change next. The way I do my conversion is I multiply the number by 1.8, and then I add 32. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take temp, and we're going to multiply it times 1.8. And then I'm going to take that same value, and now I'm going to add 32 to it. And we'll go ahead and we'll save this. Now when we click, we get 70 degrees. The only thing is, is I don't like the four digits. I'd like it just to show two digits for now. So we're going to make that change. In JavaScript, there's a two fixed function. So you take the variable temp, and then you add two fixed to it. And then you give the number of decimal points you want to go to. In this case, it's just two. When we get to Canvas, we're going to display the data as if it's coming in on the right side of the screen and moving to the left. That way over time if you read it from left to right the newest data will be on the right side. And this is where the array came in, where I have 10 spots in the array. What we want to do is we want to put the data that we just collected in the 10th spot. In order to do that you have to push it onto the array. And the name of the array was temp array and the function is push. And what we're going to push onto it is temp. So what we've really done, though, is we've added an 11th spot onto the array. A push extends the array. 
So now it has 11 spots instead of 10. 1 through 10 is still in the array, but in this case now we have, we've added the 71. I'm going to go ahead and show you that. We're going to go ahead and add the temp array to the uh, browser. I've just copied it over. We're going to save it. And as you can see, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, which are the values originally in the array. Then we added 70.14. Then we also printed out 70.14 when we collected the data like it would have done normally. If we click it again, you'll see that there'll be four of these numbers out here, but there'll be more commas. Well, actually, there'll be three of these numbers out here because it's not going to print that one twice. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 through 10. And then we have 70.14, 70.14, and 70.14 again. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and hold the temperature sensor for a minute and see if I can make that change. And you can see that now it's 73.06 and it added it to the array. What we want to do is we don't want it to add it to the array. We want to keep 10 values in this array. And what we want to do is we want to have this number slowly filter back through the array. As more data is in, we want it to shift. We're going to add, copy this BR tag up to here. So that way they'll be, we'll be able to see the temp from the temp array. The command to remove the first element off the array is shift. And you don't put anything within the parentheses. You just leave it like that. And what's going to happen is it's going to add the temperature on the right side of the array to the value 10, and it's going to remove the first value. So that way there will always be 10 items in the array. I'm going to go ahead and save this, and I'll show you again. Now when I click, we should see two lines. And you can see that the 1 is gone. So now there should still be 10 numbers in there. If I click again, 2 will be gone. And the current reading that's down here, or that's up here, is now the second reading over. So over time, the readings move from right to left. But when you're reading them over time, you'll be reading them left to right. Instead of printing out the array, though, we really want to print these values out one at a time. I'm going to go ahead and delete this portion because we won't need it anymore. We're going to go over the for loop right now. In, the, in a for loop, you start with just the word for, and what you do is you take a variable and you increment it, and then you have a counter that says, when I reach so high, stop doing it or you can go backwards when I reach so low stop doing it either way you're just going between two numbers in this case we're going to want to go through the array so we have 10 digits in the array but some things in programming start with 0 so in this case if we start to 0 the top number would be 9 so we're going to go ahead and set i equal to 0 to start as long as i is less than 10 so it will work when i is equal to 9 but when i equals 10 it will stop and a quick way to increment a variable is just plus plus. And now anything that's within this brackets is going to run while i counts from 0 to 9. So now we don't really want to display the data 1 through 10. We just want to display data if it's an actual temperature. I selected 1 through 10 both to show the numbers in the array and knowing that it was going to be less than really any temperature we're going to be testing. Now I'm going to use an if statement to test the current spot in the array that we're currently looking at. And if that value is greater than 10, we're going to display it. When you're trying to pick a location within an array, you use brackets. And if I was going to use 0, I would be looking at this spot. 1 is this spot, 2, 3, 4. If I use this variable, it will walk through the different spots in the array. So the first time through it, it will look at the first spot in the array. And if it's greater than 10, then I want to do something. So I need another set of curly braces. And in this case, I'm going to add, I'm going to display it. So I'm just going to copy this line down here and paste it in here. And what I want it to do is I want it to display the value in this temp array 
is the same. So if this spot is greater than 10, then I want to add it to the inner HTML. I think I also want to put a space in between them so they're easier to read. I've done enough, so I want to go ahead and test and make sure that everything is still working. What I'm expecting to see is when I click on it, this first time is just one value. Then the second time I click on it, I should see two. See the one, because one through nine, or zero through eight, are less than 10, so it doesn't display them. But the last one is greater than 10, so it displayed it. Now I see two. The reason we're doing it this way is will help us when we, go to dis when we show it on our canvas, when we go to draw our lines. What we want is the most current data on the furthest right and the oldest data left because that's how a chart would be drawn over time. We're going to go back and do one more thing in this video where we set it up to automatically go and get the temperatures every 10 seconds. And all you're going to do is do a command to set an interval. And we want to run the get data function. And the interval is in milliseconds, so every 1,000 milliseconds is one second. And I want to run this every 10 seconds, so I will set it to 10,000. I'm going to upload it. When I refresh this, it's going to take 10 seconds before you see the first reading, and then another 10 seconds before you see 2, and then 30 seconds before you see 3. I'll probably adjust the time on this so it may not be an exact 10 seconds to the video time. There's a first reading of 70.47. I'm going to go ahead and put my finger on it for the next reading. Go ahead and let it run until we get 10 readings and the array is full. Then what you're going to see is you're going to see the values start to shift to the left. A good one to watch would be this 76.33 and see how they're lined up on top of each other. Now it shifted one over to the left. In the next reading it should just keep shifting to the left. And what's going to happen with Canvas is we're going to have to redraw the graph every time and then it will appear as if the data is moving to the left. In this video we, we went over an array a little bit. We set an interval to go ahead and, and update the data automatically. We modified the temp that came back as Celsius, turned it into a float, and then turned it into Fahrenheit, set it to a fixed value, added it to the array, shifted the first value off the array, and then displayed the data on the screen that is actual temperature data and not just the initial values that we filled in the array with. That's about it for this video. Thanks for watching.